and unfortunately this dump truck doesn't dump fully so we're gonna be working on that today um, basically the way this is set up the hydraulic system it's a tankless system so the hydraulic cylinder and the hoses in it they uh that's that's all there is to it that's what holds all the fluid for the entire system the problem is it's extremely difficult to fill up the only uh, fill thing is like in the very top of the cylinder and it leaks so it's not all full of fluid that's why the dump body only goes like halfway up I hope and uh, it's it's just not the most easy to maintain thing ever in the world so we're gonna be working on this today what we're gonna end up doing is we're gonna build a hydraulic reservoir tank which is gonna bolt to the frame rails on this truck and the way we're gonna do this is uh, we're gonna put a tank that's gonna mount to some of these random unused bolt holes in the frame So one lesson I've learned the hard way on projects like this is it's actually fairly important that you only mark things like this out one piece at a time because if I laid out the four main rectangles I need to build this just one after another after another and then started cutting there's a chance that you know if one cuts off by like a 32nd of an inch and then you figure in the thickness of the cut and everything by the time you get to the last one you're off by like an eighth of an inch or more and that really wouldn't be fun to weld up. If you can see all these huge splits on this hose up here, this thing has seen better days. And there's so much like caked on grease and stuff on top of this hose, it's really, really hard to even get a bite at it with this wrench. You can see the things interlock, definitely three quarter inch hose. Although I think the new one's actually a little wider, so I'm kind of happy to see that. Well, you know, I've never once replaced a hydraulic hose. On a side note, I've never once particularly wanted to replace a hydraulic hose. But that's what we're gonna do today. So we've now run both of the new hydraulic lines and everything went, well, it went. That was probably one of the most rage inducing and just all around miserable tasks I've done in memory completely sucked uh you know with some jobs there's a oh well you know this part of it sucks but that part of it doesn't there is no that part of it doesn't when it comes to running hydraulic lines that's what i learned we gotta open up this five gallon thing of hydraulic juice oh that is the weirdest consistency thing ever all right so now we just pull the breather cap off our shiny brass pipe stick one end in So it begins. I need to have kids so I can pawn this job off on them. <laughs> Let's play a fun game called Pump the Hydraulic Oil. Okay, buddy, you have fun. I'm gonna go eat a sandwich now. I had an uncle who used to do that to me. Pumped so much diesel fuel. Ah, it's leaking! Ah! <laughs> That's the way to do it. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Why couldn't I just keep my stupid mouth shut? <laughs> just do something productive and then you'll eventually, eventually get a workout. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh full on splatter yeah. everywhere. 
We just painted the side of that fuel tank. Oh, oh it's gurgling. I hate these pumps so much. Not as much as math or cold weather, but this is up there. All right, so the way this works is really simple. I'm gonna try to raise and lower the bed a handful of times. So hopefully, it, you know, it purges all the air out of the system and everything. Basically, this thing uses a PTO-driven hydraulic pump. So there's like an extra power takeoff from the transmission. So to engageify this, all we do is we take our clutch and we push it in, and then we pull this lever. This engages the PTO, and then we let out on the clutch. Make sure we're in neutral so we don't take off. And now we pull this and the whole truck lurches and the bed's going up now. Uh, that's pretty cool. Window hasn't been cleaned in as long as I've been alive though. <laughs> all right here, so now to set it down, all we do is we take this lever, this controls the pump, we move it forward and the bed drops. I'm very happy to uh, have a dump truck that actually dumps now. This is one thing I've always wanted ever since I was a little kid. And uh, it works. Before, like I said, you really had to rev up the engine. It took forever to raise and only go up about this high or maybe this high or so. And now, like at idle, it'll raise the thing quickly all the way up until it stops and goes all the way back down. And everything is great with this thing mechanically. It took a lot of work to get it to this point. We changed tires, new exhaust, new carburetor, full tune-up, changed pretty much all the fluids. I actually still have to swap out the antifreeze. And um, it's, it's, it's ready to go. So now what we have to do is make it actually street legal. We gotta make a few more of these lights work, replace a couple lights on the front, and paint the thing. And I'm really happy about this. So the tank, I love how it turned out. Welding that with the full SMIG process couldn't have gone any smoother. It's very fast. Uh, I feel like there's just some very, you know, good quality welds, uh, completely acceptable to me. And uh, so I really like that. One problem, however, is uh, if you take the control lever for the dump bed and you tell it to drop at full speed, it shoots a little bit of oil out the breather cap because what happens is all the oil rushes in from the cylinder into the reservoir and uh, creates a lot of turbulence and a little bit splashes out the top. So there's two ways that a, that a person could avoid this if they were going to build a tank like that. One, they could make the tank bigger, which I'm glad I didn't do because I want this to be as small as possible so there's less chance of getting smashed on stuff as I drive through fields and whatnot. Or two, and this is what I would do if I was going to do the project again, is to install a baffle below where the breather cap is so when all that oil sloshing around, you know, it hits the baffle instead of going out the pipe. So small thing, and like I said, it is no issue at all if you drop the bed at a normal speed or a slower speed, or like I said, one that's, you know, how I do it normally. It's just an issue if you take the hydraulic lever and you go, and the bed go, boom, like that. So, well, you know, small thing. Uh, so really happy with how this turned out. Really happy that it works now, and uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, everybody.